Hi, second grade. This week we are moving into life cycles. We are going to be talking about life cycles for two weeks, and this is part one. All living things go through a life cycle. A life cycle is when a plant or animal grows and changes as it gets older. What we're looking at right now is my own personal life cycle. You'll see there's a, ba a picture of me from when I was a baby, to me on my first day of kindergarten, to me when I was in fifth grade and a cheerleader, to my high school graduation, and to right now. Just like I'm sure you would notice from when you were a baby to kindergarten to now, you've grown taller and you now look older. Just like if you were to ask mom or dad or grandma and grandpa for pictures from when they were babies and kids to now, while they're still the same person, they've grown and they've changed. We're all going through our own life cycles. So like I said before, living things go through a life cycle. They are born, they grow, they make new things, and then they die. This life cycle happens over and over. We're going to be studying the life cycles of a frog, white-tailed deer, plant, and butterfly. Some animals resemble their parents and grow larger but do not change appearance. Like ourselves, if you look for me from my kindergarten picture to now, I still have brown hair. I still look the same, but I look older. Just like a white-tailed deer is going to still resemble its parents, it's just going to grow um, larger and look older. Other animals change their appearance as they go through their cycle. If you look here at the pictures, there's the butterfly life cycle and the life cycle of a frog. In both of these life cycles, each part of the cycle, the animal or bug looks different. It's not just growing larger like we as people do or deer do. Instead, it's almost changing form. This week, we're going to study the life cycle of the frog and the life cycle of a plant. The life cycle of a frog. The life cycle starts with when an adult frog uh, lays her eggs. Once the eggs hatch, they turn into tadpoles. The tadpoles slowly begin to grow limbs and legs until it becomes a froglet with its tail still on. It finally becomes an adult frog when it loses its tail. One thing I want to point out is this happens over many days. Sometimes when looking just at a picture of a cycle, it looks like it's just going to happen quickly. But the eggs don't suddenly hatch, become tadpoles, and the tadpoles don't immediately get legs. It slowly happens and changes. Together, we're going to be watching a time lapse of a life cycle of a frog. Two things I want you to pay attention to. The first thing is going to be slowly telling you the amount of days that have gone by. Um, and I want you to just pay close attention to how long it's really taking for this frog to change from an egg to an adult frog. It doesn't happen overnight. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is how it's changing. Notice how slowly it's going to go from an egg to a tadpole. It's then going to develop some legs until it finally becomes an adult frog. Now we're going to be
of a bean plant. The life begins of a plant as a seed. The seed then germinates and it grows a plant with roots. Germinate means that it's gotten enough sunlight and water to be ready to grow. After the roots are planted, it begins to grow stems and leaves and forming slowly into an adult plant. Once the plant flowers, it will then be able to produce fruit that will contain new seeds to start the cycle all over again. Plants need a few things to be able to grow. They need to have water, light, and air to survive. Roots in plants are super important because they hold the plant in place and they also use the stem to help carry food and water from one place to another. Once roots break the surface, they form sprouts, which is the beginning little baby leaves of a baby plant. But sprouts sometimes do not survive to become adult plants because they are trampled, eaten by wildlife, frozen, or they suffer from drought, which means lack of water. But what could you build to help protect these sprouts? Today we're going to be trying an engineering challenge, and I want you to use materials around your house and try and build a uh, a structure to help protect this sprout. Hi 
everybody. So for this week's science challenge, we are actually going to be engineers. And so we are going to be trying to think of different things we have around our house that we can put together to help protect a new plant sprout. Because often some sprouts don't end up surviving because they're stepped on, they're blown over, they don't get enough sunlight, different things. And we want to make sure that we can protect it. So the first thing we want to do in our design process is we want to brainstorm ideas. So I just have a piece of paper and I'm going to fold that one way hamburger style. So vertically and then I'm going to fold it one way horizontally. So then when I open it up, I have four boxes. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a green marker and I'm going to draw my little sprout four times because this is going to give me a chance to have four different brainstorms. So I'm going to take a moment, brainstorm, and then I'll be right back and I'll kind of show you some of my ideas. Okay, so these are my four quick brainstorm sketches. And so let me walk you through what I was thinking as I made these to kind of help you maybe brainstorm. So I remember that I know for a plant sprout to continue to grow, it still needs sunlight, water, and good soil. So every one of my designs, I make sure not to top or not to block that top of the plant because I want to make sure that leaf can still get some sunlight. So some ideas I had was maybe um, putting stakes in the ground and making like a circular barrier. And then I kind of had this idea of almost doing like a spike maybe at the top so the sunlight can get in, but then that still kind of blocks the sunlight. And then I thought here, almost like a chain spiky fence to go around my sapling. So it's not, nothing's on top of it protecting, but it's more everything around. So even if an animal came to step on it, they'd step on the spikes. Or here I like this one of the idea of putting it in between two spikes, but then I still worry that the shade from these top spikes might not get enough sunlight and won't live. So I right now am thinking I'm going to be trying to make almost like a fence to go around my sapling um, and my little sprout. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look around my house and look at different things I have of what I have that could maybe make this. And I'm also just going to be using my marker cap to act as my little sprout. So I will be right back with some materials that I've collected. All right, my idea is not too crazy, so I grabbed a few things. I grabbed a paper towel roll that I think I'm going to cut down and use as the base of my fencing. Um, so it will have a nice sturdy base and it won't blow over in the wind. I then think I'm just going to use another piece of paper to act and cut out my spikes. And then I have some tape to put it all together. So I'm going to take a few minutes and build my design, and I'll be back to show you my final project. All right, so this is what I came up with. I started with my original design, and I made the spikes, and then when it kind of came out, I realized that it was just a little too low, and I could imagine like a squirrel or something just like not seeing it and stepping right over it. So I added two tall spikes, and I kind of made them a little spiky, you can see. Um, and I didn't want to put it on all the sides because I didn't want to block all the sun, but I thought that these two spikes would stop an animal or something from stepping down. And so then I just can place my sprout below. Let's see if I slowly lift it up. And there is my engineered project. So I hope you guys give this a try. You can go as big or as little as you'd like and it's all about using things that you have around your house um, and just kind of getting creative and thinking about what you could make to protect. Uh, I would love to see your designs. If you want you can share them on Flipgrid and I would love to see what you've come up with.